that works. Hello, I'm still playing with my camera setup here, so... Um, stuff doesn't matter. Uh, welcome to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael. I didn't forget it again. I'm very proud. Very proud. Um, we're still doing our little Yugo Sakamoto filmography uh, special. Um, I explained more about the director and why and everything in the last video. Um, this one will be probably much shorter because we're still stuck with a very short, short movie. And um, it's about like 17 minutes long. Um, so it will be a quicker one this time, but it uh, doesn't matter. I guess I talk too much anyway. So we're talking about Pun, so Bread, from 2017, directed by Yugo Sakamoto, uh, together with uh, Nagi Kutsuji, and they made a different movie together as well. Um, that's nowhere to be found, so this is probably the only um, time they directed together that we can actually enjoy it. And in the last video I said this movie is, as well as all the other older Sakamoto titles, not available in English, but it's actually on Vimeo with English subtitles in pretty good quality. So if you just Google for it, I, I don't know if it's uh, officially there or not, uh, but you, you can Google, you can find it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a nice little movie that has interestingly quite a lot of the Sakamoto trademarks, but doesn't really seem to fit in this era of his filmmaking. It is much more like a legendary uh, Hitman Kunioka, not killer, legendary Hitman Kunioka. Uh, in that regard, that it's very comical, it's not really violent. There, there is violence, but it's comic violence. It's uh, all intended to be funny and cute. And um, yeah, but there's some, some things that are very similar. So I guess this takes away the little bit lighter part of his. Uh, later filmography, which is very interesting, that he will ignore this for quite some time, while working with at least some of the same people still. So, yeah, uh, who is he working with here? Of course, uh, Nagyo Tsuji uh, acts in this as well, and we have some of the common names, like Yu Yasuda and Takuya Matsumoto und uh, and and not und und is German almost the same English and German if you can speak English you can basically speak German <laughs> um no uh, interestingly we have two quite famous names here one is a lady called uh, Donguri or Yoshiko Takehara and um she used to be a comedian. I think she did some Rakugo as well, which is basically like traditional comedy, like traditional uh, funny storytelling. And um, after this, I think this was one of her first um, movie roles that she played. Uh, she had her big breakthrough, I guess. That must have been the first big success as an actress was a one cut of the dead. I guess that's the most likely where you might have seen her. Then she did a lot of TV and uh, yeah, she's uh, quite famous nowadays. And um, there's one more actor, that's Rikia Kaido, who I first really noticed last year at the uh, Japan Film Festival Hamburg, um, where he played the main role in Daruma, the U uh, Yakuza VTuber or something like that. And um, yeah, he seems to be one of the more famous um, Kansai B-movie actors. So he appears in quite some... Uh, 
cheap movies doing some stuff. Uh, he's in some other um, uh, Sakamoto movies as well, like Yellow Dragon's Village and uh, Family Wars. And yeah, he's, he's a face you might have seen. Uh, I recently found out that he seemingly owns a bar as well. Maybe I should uh, go there and say hello. Um, anyway, uh, quite um, a face that you have seen, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a, like well, a, a memorable appearance. And um, yeah, they're all in this little fun comedy that's all about a baker who terrorizes his uh, employees um, and uh, suddenly after he um, tortures, tortured his Indian uh, part-time worker by feeding him with uh, beef curry bread. You know, in, in Japan they like this deep-fried this deep fried buns filled with curry and uh, here he tortured uh, him by giving him the food and then saying like oh uh, uh, isn't there something about beef in india isn't that some something problematic and then uh, everything goes crazy and uh, our protagonist um, suddenly finds a secret door to his uh, slave chamber and they start a little revolution and um yeah it's, it's quite amusing little film especially takuya matsumoto is pretty great here because he plays a sakamoto typical complete piece of uh, kaka and um who turns out to be like the sweetest nicest person in the world like he he yells at the uh, staff that she's too slow and then he gets his change and just throws everything in the donation box and then he yells at the grandmother next to him like ah can't you do any faster and then he just helps her and carries her to the station and stuff like that and it's a, just a hilarious scene a guy in a monkey suit shows up um, there's just a lot of random stuff uh, suddenly the baker pulls out a a bazooka and destroys a uh, part of Kyoto and all, all, all the stuff. It's uh, pretty funny. Um, all, all the violence is very comical. Like the girl on her way to work, she gets hit by a bus and keeps going like nothing happened. Um, in his other movies, that would have ended in a very gory, explicit uh, death scene, but here. Nothing, it just keeps going and being fun. Uh, just at the end, uh, suddenly something happens. There's a small little mean twist at the end, but even that is kind kind of cute. Um, yeah, but we've got some, some interesting things, like there's a probably YouTuber, some girl that walks around Kyoto taking videos of her talking to the camera like I do right here and right now. And uh, I'm not in Kyoto, I'm in Osaka, but uh, anyway. Um, so we get this more, um, yeah, this mockumentary taste a little bit. In, I think in B was one scene like that or something, but it wasn't really. Well, it's there, but here we've got this the girl holding the camera and uh, talking to it, um, faking authenticity, which will show up in many of his movies, and of course, which will be pushed to the extreme in the mockumentary uh, legendary Hitman Kunioka and its sequels, um, where it sometimes works better and sometimes he just doesn't care that he's making a mockumentary uh, but we will get to that later but uh, yeah the, you can see here some some funny things same um for example i think in baby assassins is it one or two um they put the 
cake into the fridge and we have this point of view shot from inside the fridge and here it's the same with the Meron pan and the oven like we have the shot from inside the oven to the outside um, stuff like that so he's, he's tried some some camera things that he will pick up later and uh, that will yeah be quite some kind of a trademark shot maybe or trademark style that he will use a lot and uh, that's, that's uh, fun to see and among these early movies that are all so nihilistic and nasty and mean it's really nice that this one is a little bit nicer and lighter even our complete psychopath Yu Yasuda is I mean he wants to execute someone but uh, in the end he's just another fun guy uh, in the fun crowd and that's good that's all, all really nice and enjoyable and uh, yeah it's a good little movie um, I, I just wondered I never checked if yeah at, at least according to letterbox and letterbox is let's say not good for this early and, and not early for for japanese independent cinema um because they just have so many mistakes and uh holes in their uh database i try to fix that but um yeah i wonder if she directed more she appeared in a lot of movies and she did a lot of tv but oh here yeah she directed um not that much so after the she, she did two movies in 2016 that's yurete maskedo and Shiawase no Okame Unko Poop. Um, yeah, then this out here, Crazy Island, was the one that she did with Sakamoto together. And then she did something else as Sukiyaki. Eh? Sukiyaki Baba no Dancing Time. I have no idea. And I am Jam. Uh, I never heard about these last two movies, so I guess she just switched to acting. Um, yeah, quite a lot. Um, quite some stuff in the theater as well. So, uh, yeah. Seemingly she's not so much into directing, but I would be interested to see more what she's doing because. Uh, that's always a thing, especially with like directors who become famous to see with who they cooperated in the past. It's always fun with uh, Shinya Tsukamoto. Uh, so many people say the first Tetsu is so different from um, from his later movies, which is kind of true. But, uh, yeah, because he had some co-directors and then the question is how much influence did they actually have? Well, um, here for, for Tetsu, uh, most famous uh, Shouzin uh, Fukui and um, was it Nobu Kanaoka? I think no no not Nobu Kanoka the other one. Um Kei Fujiwara. Kei Fujiwara. Um who did some camera as well and uh, yeah and especially for her if you look at her movies um Organ and Ido Yeah no, it explains at least the um storytelling <laughs> see a little bit more abstract storytelling of uh, the first tetsu but that's a completely different uh, story i could talk about shinya tsukamoto for ages and ages because he's the greatest director alive 
but we're here to talk about uh, Yubu Sakamoto, who's maybe not the greatest director alive because of Shinya Tsukamoto, but he's pretty good. And um, I'm very interested to see where that leads, especially now with the Baby Assassin 3 and the TV show. What are we getting here? What I didn't mention in the last video, what I'm very excited about the TV show is um, because of the audio dramas. Um, in Japan, if you go to the cinema, you can buy a, a pamphlet, like a making of a book. Well, usually it's very similar, like a magazine. But anyway, you can buy that. And uh, for Baby Assassins uh, 1 and 2, both of them came with a CD where you had one song from the soundtrack so uh, the second one must have been the second one came with uh, Atarashi Gakko no Rira or I, I think they changed their name to just Atarashi Gakko is that official or I, I think they changed anyway uh, there's one song there and then you have some audio dramas and they're really fun they're completely weird and um yeah, I, I will talk about those at a different point, I guess, because I have to listen to them a few more times. Um, sometimes not so easy to follow. I'm not 100% fluent in Japanese, so uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it will happen someday. But um, no, they're, they're really fun and entertaining, and I just want to see what happens if we take it more into a like maybe storytelling mode where we can actually focus on the everyday that's in the title that's baby assassins every day and uh, let them do some more normal stuff um, i didn't like the first few minutes of the second movie so much where they just stay at home and eat and do weird things and uh, more for the jokes that are not so great like this typical oh i thought you paid no i thought you paid um no oh, come on you can do better than that no but uh they, they, they talk especially a lot, of, a lot about pop culture uh there's one episode with a big um conan title chris like the conan the detective not the barbarian and um yeah, they, they talk about Marvel movies and all this stuff, and it's it's pretty fun. Like they they try to focus on one main plot element, like having a uh, very dangerous explosives at home, and they just get so distracted by all the other stuff that's happening around them that it's uh, just just pretty good and pretty fun. And I hope the show is a little bit like that. Of course, I still want my action scenes. But um, I feel like it's a good chance to show more of that side of the whole franchise. And that will be fun. But uh, yeah, there will be a separate episode on the audio dramas, I guess. Someday. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to see the show and the new movie. And... Uh, what I will have to say about the next movie that follows, but uh, that's not for today. I think two in one day is enough. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my little blah blah, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I enjoy talking here, so it's not so important how many people watch, but if many people watch, of course, it's more encouraging and more fun for me. Uh, if you have any mean comments, please just put them somewhere, shout it out of the window where I can't uh, hear it. No? So, thank you very much. Have a nice day. See you soon. Bye.